Hello, this is Johannes, and in this video we are going to have a look on how to play All Things New by Planet Shakers. Please note that during the recording of the video, this song is not yet officially released, so I listened to all the versions that are out there, they released a demo version and some live versions, and I tried to combine everything together, uh, as I think this is what they're going to be ending up with. So I might be wrong, and in the end the song sounds different, but this is how I play it, this is my approach. Whenever you think it's wrong or you think something else sounds better, then just feel free to use it. And if you like, leave a comment below and tell me how you play it at these points. As the use gear affects the sound, I will just talk you through what I'm using here. So I'm having a Line 6 Helix down there, the original flow version. And um, this is a Stromberg guitar. It has two Sur humbuckers and a coil split function. Uh, in this song I usually tend to stick with the coil splits because I think they sound good in this case. If you do not have coil split then I would suggest you use the combination of both humbuckers if you can. The patch that I'm using can be found in the description below and I put the link there so you can download it. I decided to sell it for a very reasonable price, um, so I highly appreciate it if you buy it and use it. And um, if not, then it's fine as well. I hope you have fun learning this song with me. Talking about the song itself, it's in the key of G major and has a tempo of 128 BPM. And it consists out of three verses, then we have a bridge, a chorus and a tag. The tag is the section where they repeat the words all things new. And the song is pretty much, well, synth and piano heavy. But the guitar really adds some nice flavor, um, it has some nice funky parts in it. And uh, so let's dive into it. So for the first verse, I personally do not play anything because I think it's really nice to have the piano building up the song. And um, Depending on the version you listen to, there is a lead line, which is pretty much back in the mix, but adds some nice flavor. So you have to listen a few times to get the timing right, I think, because it does not start right at, at the one. But um, here's what they play, at least what I think what they play. <laughs> So um, you might have noticed that I'm not picking every note with my pick, but I'm using some kind of a hybrid picking approach. So I do a downstroke on the first note and then use my middle finger to like pluck the note on the high E string. The string pairs we are using are the G string and the high E string. And we're starting off with the seventh fret on the G string. And we do so by sliding in from the fifth fret. So we have slide and down pick. And on the seventh fret as well, high E string. Then the slide thing again. But on the high E string, we do the fifth fret. It's all together. And then we slide up all the way to the ninth fret. And then we use the octave note which is on the 12th fret on the high E string. It might be a little bit of stretch depending on how you use your fingers. So I tend to do all the sliding things with my middle finger on the left hand. Because I feel like it sounds more smooth. And so as I do not want to use the other finger between those two, I just stick with my pinky here. Okay, these parts are being repeated in every verse there is. In the third verse, which has some different chords, 
they are playing some additional parts to it that we're going to cover when we're looking at the third verse at that time. So the other guitars, they are, I feel they are doing nothing. So um, for the first part, I do only play those lead lines. So coming to the second verse, the guitars do play something. So we have a more clean sound. I typically decide to stick with the split coil neck humbucker. And um, well, it sounds really crisp. And the chords that we need is E minor. By the way, they're all starting on the fifth fret, uh, on the A string. So actually this one's on the seventh fret, E minor. Next one is D major. I am a bar person, so you can also play with the three individual fingers, but that's not my type of playing, so I just bar it and live with some not perfectly played notes at the top here. So E minor, D major, C major, going up to G major. And here comes the fun part. I think it's going back to D major. If you look into the chord sheets that are available online at various resources, they are basically all telling you to play a B minor at that spot, but I just don't feel like it belongs there. So maybe I'm wrong, but I just play a D instead. So uh, fret-wise, we have E minor on the seventh fret, D major on the fifth fret, then C major on the third, G major on the tenth, and then going back to the fifth, D. In terms of rhythm, it's I just play it fast and then we turn on the metronome so you can better hear and feel it and then we will have a look at it slowly. So playing it once again slowly. At least I feel there is a second guitar playing something very similar but adding up some top end to the chords. So maybe you are good enough to play everything together. I am certainly not. So um, instead of you know playing the complete chord, I am playing only the upper four strings for the minor chord and for the major chords only the upper three strings. And I switch to the chord split of the bridge pickup. Um, to get more of that crispy sound. So we're playing actually the same thing as the other guitar does, but only, as I said, the upper string. So. If you like, you can add some um, individual notes, like so. these two parts so you can get a better feeling of it.
Okay, so this is it for verse 1 and verse 2. Up next there is a chorus on the list and it has a distortion sound. So um, basically what we have here is the first half of the chorus, the guitars do not play anything and in the second part they used to have kind of a build up. So um, playing the chords to add fullness and intensity to the song. And the chords are C major, E minor, D major, and I just play a G there. You can have a, um, you know, G slash B chord there as well if you like to. But I usually just stick with the G chord at that place. And um, it's going to be played twice and at the repetition you do not play the G thing, but you do stay at the D major chord. So rhythmically it is... And then comes the next part. So playing it with the metronome. And if you listen closely, there is one version where you hear a lead line as well, which is sound-wise. Slightly distorted. And um, it goes like this. You have the 12th fret on the G string and the 15th fret on the B string. And it does not start at the one but rather on the one end, and then it's going to be repeated at the three end. What they're singing at that place is Jesus, you rose again, and after the word Jesus, there is a pretty significant drum hit, which marks the one, and after that, on the end, you start playing. And what you play is... which is two sixteenth notes, eighth note, eighth note. In terms of picking, I stick to straight alternate picking, which means I'm going to use down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you can play it over and over and do not uh, mess up somewhere because it's pretty consistent movement. So let's overdub it once again. Two, three, four, one. And so on, to get the point. In one live session, they start with the course to teach the church how the new song works. And uh, I think this is a pretty cool part, and especially the chord voicings, let's call them like this. Um, they are using, so I thought let's just throw it in here as well. So the chords are C, E minor, D, and then B minor. So, but instead of playing them normal, he plays them kind of open. So, starting on the eighth string, eighth string, we have the third fret and the second fret on the D string and uh, he's playing like only the first, the, the next three strings. So A, D, G. Like this. And then he slides up to the E chord and um, for this you have basically the, the root is on the seventh fret on the A string 
and then you need a little bit of stretch and put your index finger on the fifth fret of the D string. So. Then for the D chord, back two frets, so fifth fret on the A string and fourth fret on the D string. So all together. Then B minor, so I just play B power chord. Over again. Coming all the way to the tech section, where they repeat all things new, all things new, all things new, and so on. And um, on the second, all things new, starting right after the new, they are using a funk-like guitar riff. And um, some explanations first. These are 16th note rhythms. So um, when practicing, you can just try to keep your hands strumming in 16th rhythm. And so all the muting is done with the left hand and we're playing only octave riffs and um yeah so let's have a listen my bad and this is going to be repeated so we have like a like i said 16th note rhythm and a lot of it is muted with our left hand. So, so uh, when you play it, you can start by just playing it with the right hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I tend to play those kind of riffs with my index finger and my pinky. You can use your ring finger as well, but I just use those and it starts off at the 12th fret of the A string and slides into two frets higher. So 12, 14. So we have 12, 14, 12 and then again but not back to the 12th but down to 9. So from the beginning then back again to 12 and down to 5 and this is going to be repeated back to 12 so putting it all together So here we are now talking about verse 3 and as I said before the chords that are being played are quite different and so are the octaves, the riff that is going to be played. So talking about the chords I have to look down my cheat sheet because I'm bad at remembering chord names. We have a E minor, D, A minor 7, C major 7, D. And I feel like here it goes back to a B minor. So um, while these chords are being played, the, one of the guitars also plays that funky style. And uh, I'll play it one time for you.
same rhythmic pattern as uh, we just had before in the tag. So starting at the 12th fret and then... No, we're not starting at the 12th fret, we're starting at the 10th fret. So 10, 12, then 15. playing then the first guitar can play what I just showed you and the second guitar plays the first half the same so but then instead of playing the same thing over and over this guitar is going back to the chords that have been played in the other verses so So guitar two would be D. And uh, if you have one more guitar player, then they can for sure come in and you know, play the upper part of the verse like we've had before. Now, as I said before, using the same tone as we've had in the intro, there is a lead line which can be heard quite back in the mix. By the way, if you have one guitar player who likes to play this and they want to join the other parts of the verse, then they can just play the octave which we have here and move it around with the chords that are being played. So but that's the chord progression changes at this point. Um, there's one extension to the riff we just had. So this stays the same and then one time they are playing which is sliding from the 7th fret of the B string to the 8th fret then I tend to use my middle finger to pluck the 10th fret on the high string so then back to the 8th fret of the B string and then I'm going to the 9th fret with my middle finger and slide up to the 11th fret. So and then use my index finger to play a high note on a note on the high E string which is located at 1 fret down so this is the 10th fret. Again. So I'm not pretty sure if they're actually playing this, but um, for me it feels like something like this belongs there. So maybe you want to adopt it, maybe you don't. Do whatever feels best for you. Now let's finally have a look at the chorus part. So before the chorus starts, we usually have a tag. So all things new, all things new. 
and um, it does not just go straight into the bridge but we have a little break there so um, you remember in the tech we are playing and for that break we leave away the last two chords so we're actually only playing there's the break and then it starts over with the bridge so the bridge itself is basically the same as we just played before but in the end we are not going to play those repeating riffs that we just had but instead we play a D octave so so what we are playing here is And you can play this one as long as you want and as long as you get back in time to this one. So. so you get it, right? And then in the very end of the song we have a C chord which will be distorted and it will sound like this. So three times C chord. All right, that's it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed and you learned something from me and stay tuned if you want some patch sound demos. I'm going to talk about how it's set up and um, yeah, maybe that helps. So see you next time. One important thing about this patch is that the first volume block is the volume pedal, so it's mapped to expression pedal 1, and the second volume block is used to reduce the input volume. So hence in this snapshots I reduced the input volume and increased a little bit of the gain of one of the overdrive pedals, so to get a specific tonal characteristics out of it. And the very last volume block, actually it's a gain block, so the second second block here is also a gain block. The last one is used to level the volume between the different patches. So whatever guitar you have, you might just want to start dialing in that level at the end, that gain block, so you have consistent level throughout the snapshots. Yes, I am one of those persons who leaves protector screens on until they fall off by itself. This will be pretty much in a few weeks the case, I guess. But nevertheless, let's have a look into the patch and um, more importantly, let's have a listen, right? So, I'm going to play every snapshot in every pickup position that is available on my guitar, which is one, two, three, four, five. Um, volume 100%, tone 100%. So what I've done here is basically split up the snapshots by part. So on the bottom row we do have the rhythm section and on the top row we have the lead section. And the last two snapshots they are some, I'd call them generic sounds. So it's a very, very huge and wide rock sound. Bridge pickup and uh, just for the sake of simplicity, neck pickup only. So that's the rock sound. Just just do both pickups 
again here. You know. It tends to be a bit muddy, so um, I think it actually quite fits this song well. And the funkit version of the generic patch or snapshot is, as the name says, used to play some funky style songs and um, or riffs. I personally like to use it, as I said before, split coil and either neck split coil or bridge split split coil. This was neck and here comes the bridge. So it sounds pretty crisp and sharp. So I would not use it with the bridge pickup itself. At least for this song, it might be useful for other songs, but I do not like it in this song. Um, both pickups at the same time. And neck pickup alone. So, okay, these are the generic ones. So for the intro rhythmic wise, I did not talk a lot about this in the tutorial. So I would just suggest if you want to play in the intro, then just play the chords. And um, there's one video of Joth using the chorus to teach the church how to play the new song. And um, I actually quite like this section. So I just, this would be the sound that I feel that he's using. So uh, it would pretty much sound like this. And this was used split coil neck pickup. I'm going all the way down to the bridge pickup. Split coil neck, uh, sorry, split coil bridge. Both pickups. Now for the lead part, as I mentioned in the tutorial, it is pretty much distorted sounds and uh, you remember. So bridge pickup. Split coil neck. Alone. 
talking about the verse verse rhythm. So you remember. I'll just play this part over and over. So bridge pickup. Kind of harsh. Split coil bridge. Both pickups. Split coil neck. And neck blow. The lead part of the verse tone is very similar, so um, I just demonstrated using the split call neck pickup. And I'll stay with this patch for a second and play the, the lead part. For me it has a little bit of more of a clarity. As I did it before, bridge pickup, almost. Mm, bridge split, this is what I like to use, both. Split neck. So, as usual, during a recording session, the camera battery dies at least once. So, here we are back again. Starting with the bridge pickup alone for the rhythm chorus part. Chord split bridge. Both pickups. Coil split neck. Neck alone. So, talking about the lead part of the chorus, it's um, this little part here. So, you know what, I just play same chord as before. So you can feel a little bit how the sound behaves. This was the bridge pickup, now we have cold split bridge. Both pickups. Split neck. And neck alone. So there we have it. 